Hey everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be learning about binary trees. Binary trees are extending upon our knowledge of linked lists, and they're a little more complicated, but they allow for some very cool things when it comes to uh, keeping uh, items sorted and searching for items. So uh, if you haven't watched the linked list videos in this series, go back and watch those. I'll put a link to those in this video. That being said, binary trees, you can picture them as um, a tree structure like this. So we have a root node at the top. So um, this is the root. And then each node can uh, have up to two children if it wants. So for example, our root has a left child right here and then a right child right here. And the left child has a left child as well and a right child and so on. It can go on uh, pretty much infinitely. Uh, but for example, the right child doesn't have any children. So it stops right here and the right and left children are both null. So that's how you can kind of picture um, a binary tree. And we're gonna go ahead and code a very basic one. Um, and we're gonna focus on uh, creating a binary tree and then um, searching through it and seeing if an item uh, is in it. Okay, so let's get started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a class um, called binary tree. Okay, so we have that class right here. And then we also have a class called node which we will create right there. Um, so when we create a binary tree, uh, we need to start uh, the root node. So we'll say initialize. So when this binary tree is initialized, uh, we need to set the root of it. So we'll make an adder uh, accessor and we'll call that the root. And then inside this initialize method, we'll say self.root equals a node. And we'll pass in a node right here. Awesome. So this will allow us to create a binary tree and set the root node equal to whatever node we pass in right here. Cool. So now we'll come down here to the node class and we'll make a few adder accessors on this as well as an initialize method. So we'll say adder accessor. And this adder accessor, if you watch the linked list videos, is going to be slightly different um, because we need a left and a right instead of just a next node. So we'll say there's a left node, there's a right node, and then we need to be able to store a value in these nodes. Cool. Uh, then we make an initialize method for this node, and we allow people to initialize a node um, with a left or a right node, and then a value. And we've given all these uh, parameters um, default values of nil, just in case someone doesn't want to provide a left uh, value they can uh, it can just take the value of nil okay so we come in here into the initialize method and all we have to do is just set uh, the left node equal to whatever's passed in um, the right node equal to what's ever passed in for the right and the value equal to the value just to reiterate we're using self dot here because if i was to just write um, left equals left what this is doing is this left is gonna be the value that's passed in as a parameter, but this is just gonna be a local variable. So it's not actually gonna set this, um, it's not actually gonna use this adder accessor to set uh, an instance variable on this class. It's just gonna be a local variable. So that's why you have to use self there. Just to reiterate on that, I've gotten a few questions about that. All right, so this looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and test it. So we'll come down here and we'll say bt equals binary tree.new and what do we have to do? We have to pass in a node so I can say node.new and then in this node we have to pass in a left and a right for now we'll just say nil and then a value is one so I'll pass in the value of one. Alright now down here just to check that it works we'll say puts pt.root.value and this should print out one. So let's go ahead and run it and make sure it works which it does. So we get one printed out right here, which means our put statement uh, worked properly. All right, so we could add another node to uh, the root node as a child. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll clean this up a little bit just to make it easier. So we will say root equals node.new, and then we'll pass in um, nil. Let's just do it in a separate line so it's a little easier to see. So this is creating our root node, and then I'll say child equals uh, node.new nil nil two 
and then what we have to do is we have to say uh, root dot left equals child and then we have to create our binary tree again so binary tree equals binary tree dot new and pass in that root node as the uh, starting node all right now we can print out uh, the roots value but we should also be able to do bt uh, dot root dot left dot value and that should print out two and then if we want to check what the right child is we can do uh, puts pt dot root dot right dot value and so um, well actually that would fail because there is no right so we'll just print out the right and we should see that this is nil all right let's go ahead and clear this out and run that again and we see we get one which is the root nodes value two which is the root nodes left child's value and then nil right here we get nothing which is uh, the root nodes right child which is nil so everything is working great. All right, what do we have to do as our next step? So um, we've created a binary tree data structure, a node data structure. So now let's add um, one algorithm to the binary tree and let's say, uh, let's call it find. So we want to have this method search the binary tree and tell us if a value is contained within the binary tree. So we'll say, we're trying to find this value here. And what do we have to do? Well, we have to start at the root and we have to traverse down every single pathway in the tree searching for this value. If we don't find the value, we return false. If we do, we return true. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this, but we're going to do it with recursion, which will um, allow us to traverse the tree very easily. So what do we have to do? Well, let's do a first check to make sure that the root uh, isn't the value. So uh, if root dot value equals uh, value um, then all we have to do is return uh, true so this would just be a super quick check um, to make sure uh, this value isn't in the root node so if it isn't in the root node uh, then let's go down to the root nodes uh, children so we can say we can make a new method find helper um, and this takes a node and then a value okay and so this is going to be our recursive method that we call within the find method. Um, and the reason we drew that is just so the find method, you can just pass in a value. Um, you don't have to pass in a node and it just makes the API a little cleaner. And then this will be the recursive method. So recursive methods, they have to have a few things. They have to have a base case. So um, we have to know when to return from the recursive method and we have to know when to call the recursive method again. So let's make sure we get that base case in first, uh, just so we don't forget. So what'll, what, what will our base case be? Well, um, if the node uh, is null, then we just want to return. So if node equals equals nil, or we can just do, do if node dot nil like that, um, we just want to return. Okay, and that's just to make sure we don't get stuck in any infinite loops or anything like that. All right, so if the node isn't nil, uh, first thing we want to do is check if this node's value equals the value we're searching for. Uh, so we'll say uh, if node.value equals the value we're searching for, then we want to return uh, true. Because we found the value that we were searching for, it was in the tree, um, so we want to just return true. Um, if this is not the case, then we would want to go search um, the node's left and right children to see if one of those uh, has the value we're looking for. Um, so we can call this method again. So we can say helper, find helper. And then instead of just passing node in here, we can say node.left. Um, and then once again, we'll pass the value we're searching for. Um, and now we also have to search the node's right node. All right. So we're saying um, call this method again and look at the left node. Um, try to find this value. And then if it returns from there, we're going to come and we're going to look at the right node. So um, you might be familiar with this concept but this is uh, depth first search so we're going all the way down um, the left side of the tree first and then when we come back up uh, at each level we're going to be looking um, on the right side of that node okay so we're calling this find helper recursively uh, for the left and right nodes um, now we need to report back from each of these recursive calls uh, if we found the node or not so before we call either of these um, what we can do is we can say uh, create a variable, variable called found and set equals to false. Um, and then 
uh, what we can do is we can just set found equals right here and then say if found return found okay and then if it didn't go through here then we'll check the right node and we can just return that right there okay so this should traverse every node in the tree uh, searching for the value and as soon as it finds the value it should return that and we can uh, return that up the call stack and finally right here we can just say return find helper and we can do root and then we can pass in the value we're searching for all right so let's go ahead and run this and we don't technically need this line but uh, it's nice to have it just to exit out early uh, if the root node happens to be the value we're searching for all right so let's come down here and let's search for a value in our binary tree so we can say binary tree dot find um, and let's do two so we'll put in two here and then we'll put that out just to see uh, what it returns all right so we'll go back into our console clear it out and run that again and we can see we get uh, true so our algorithm seems to have worked it found that our binary tree contained the value of two um, and so let's try a value that's not in our tree just to make sure that it's not going to be reporting uh, false positives so we'll put in six which is not in our tree so let's go ahead and run this and see if we get uh, false so we'll clear it and we'll run our binary tree and you can see uh, we get nil returned which is false so that means it did not find that value in our tree. Uh, let's just run a few more examples just to double check. Um, so I can say uh, left child's child equals no dot new, uh, nil, nil, and the value will be three. Um, and then I can say a child dot left equals left child's child. Um, and now we can search for uh, the value of three and this should return true. So we'll clear this out and we get true. And then if we search for four, that's gonna be false. Uh, so we shouldn't get uh, a true value, uh, which is true. So we get nil, uh, that's great. Um, and now um, let's just make sure the, uh, if it was the right child, it would also find it. Um, so we're going to, oops, sorry about that. We're gonna do the right child here and it should also find the right child. So this should be true, which it is. And now if we come back here, uh, change this to something that's not in the tree, uh, clear it out, it should be nil. Cool. So it looks like our find method is working properly and we're using this recursive find helper to traverse the tree um, in depth first search mode, uh, searching each node and seeing if the value is contained within that node. So in this video, you should have learned how to code up a basic binary tree and how to implement a find method that goes ahead and searches that binary tree uh, for a specific value. Binary trees are extremely useful. This just scratches the surface of binary trees. They're used in many different applications. Um, and you may have heard of one of the most common ones, which is a binary search tree, which uses a binary tree to keep um, a list of items organized uh, for quick searching um, and inserting. Uh, so that could be another application that binary trees could be used for. In a future video, I will code up a binary search tree and we can see how that works. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about binary trees. Hopefully you're starting to feel comfortable with some of these uh, algorithms and data structures. Uh, if not, please feel free to leave any questions down for me below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm gonna be releasing more Ruby data structures and algorithms videos, as well as some videos on Rails and some new videos, uh, possibly on some blockchain stuff. I've been getting interested in that uh, with the recent hype around that space. So keep an eye out for all those videos coming soon. Just make sure to subscribe uh, to catch those. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day.